Sorry, Rob, to interrupt you for a moment, you're muted. There we are, tube still in marker, folks, from the salt cellars. Thanks uh, to Virginia and Rob for that great tune and a uh, great lead up to the uh, conference awards ceremony. Uh, just a quick note, uh, Salt Cellars are about to release their third CD this spring titled Inside These Walls. So uh, I suggest you get your orders in as quick as you can to beat the rush for that, what's going to be a fantastic CD, I have no doubt. Uh, just a quick, <clears throat> excuse me, just a couple of quick little information about the Salt Cellars. Uh, they actually hail from the Newth and Bancroft area. And when Virginia and the group are not performing, Virginia is a very engaged in the local forestry sector and focuses a lot on forestry education. So thanks so much, Virginia, for that. I'd now like to welcome you to the conference awards ceremony. This is an opportunity for Forest Ontario to recognize individuals or groups of individuals for their achievements in supporting forestry. I'll be introducing the presenter of these awards and we'll then see a video of the presenters and then a video of the folks receiving the award. And, and then I'll be back again to introduce the next presenter and so on until we're through all the awards. And it's just amazing this year, we've got some incredible recipients for the awards and some incredible presenters as well. So to kick it off, I'm gonna start with the first award, which is the Susan Wycheck Forestry Education Award and is presented by Ken Jewett. Now Ken started in business with the Abitibi Paper Company in 1950. At age 40, 1970, he left Abitibi and spent the next year arranging financing and equipping a plant for a new business called Marzen Foods. Marzen produces frozen meals for supermarket chains, restaurant chains, and the healthcare field, and has since become hugely successful. Now, Ken's always had a passion for maple trees, and in 2000, he established Maple Leafs Forever. The mandate of Maple Leafs Forever is to promote and support the planting of native maples. And to date, Maple Leafs Forever has supported the planting of over 130,000 native maples through Ontario and all through Ken's personal financial contributions of close to three quarters of a million dollars. So thank you very much, Ken, for your contributions along that way. Ken is also a longtime supporter of forestry education and specifically our Ontario Envirothon. And we greatly appreciate his support for this great educational program. Ken was also a trustee of the Trees Ontario Foundation from 2002 until 2007. And finally, Ken is a certified seed collector. Now, if you look around, you might find Ken up a tree getting some uh, maple seed from the tree. So with that, I'll pass it over to Ken's uh, presentation. My name is Ken Joe and I'm the founder of Maple Leafs Forever. Forest and Terra have asked me to present the Susan Wycheck Forestry Education Award this year. I'm pleased to do this as I'm a big supporter of forest education. This year, the winner of the award is York Region. I understand that James Lane at York Region will be accepting this award. York Region is very deserving of this award for the long-term commitment to Ontario Envirothon and other forest education initiatives, such as virtual hikes, tree bee contests, fall forestry festivals, and discover your forest. They've done so much wonderful work. Thank you. Thank you to Forest Ontario for honoring York Region's natural heritage and forestry contributions to environmental education. Specifically, I would like to thank Rob Keane and his team at Forest Ontario for this honor and continuing to partner on successful stewardship and education programs with York Region. I'm very proud to lead a team at York Region and feel very fortunate to receive this recognition on their behalf. For those that aren't familiar, our stewardship and education initiatives all come out of our greening strategy, which acts as our blueprint for on the ground action. It outlines programs such as tree planting, stewardship, education, and conserving natural lands, with a focus on partnering with local organizations and residents to make our communities greener. I thought I'd give a quick overview of just the, of the past six years on the greening strategy. In the past six years, we've planted over half a million trees and shrubs. We've engaged 250,000 residents at over 1,100 events. We've leveraged an additional 5.8 million in funding. We've conserved 242 hectares of land. 
and we've participated in 125 forums or presentations. We've been fortunate enough to have Forest Ontario as an active partner on several programs for this strategy, including our annual Spring Forest Festival, Tree Bee, and Envirothon competitions. In 2021, we also piloted a virtual hike at the Elder King Woodlands, one of our 22 forest tracks of the York Regional Forest. I can't forget to acknowledge and thank York Region Council for continuously endorsing the greening strategy. They have showed unwavering support and interest in our programs since 2001, when the greening strategy was first introduced. Without their enthusiasm, we would not be able to do what we have done. Finally, I'd like to dedicate this award to York Region residents for participating in our forest stewardship and education programs and continuously providing us with outstanding feedback to keep our programs relevant and engaging. I think we are lucky to witness people from all walks of life with diverse backgrounds, young and old, who spend time in the forest. And that is what truly keeps us moving forward in forest steward and ship and education in the region. And thank you again for this outstanding award. Thanks very much, Ken, James, and congratulations, York Region. Our next award is the White Pine Award, and it's going to be presented by Christine LaDuke. Uh, Christine is Woodlands Operations Supervisor with Ecom Timber Corporation. She holds a Master of Conservation from the University of Toronto's Faculty of Forestry and held Senior Policy Advisor uh, position for the Minister of Natural Resources, and then moved on to work for the Ontario Forest Industries Association. Christine is a recipient of the Prince of Wales Award for Sustainable Forestry and the Ontario Professional Foresters Association Werner Award. Christine is a registered professional forester in September 2022, sorry, 2020, was named one of the Canadian Forest Industries Magazine Top 10 Under 40. Most importantly, in my mind, is Christine is also Vice President of Forest Ontario. Over to you, Christine. Hi, I'm Christine, professional forester based out of Timmins, and today it's my pleasure to present to you the White Pine Award. This award recognizes contributions of students to forestry education and awareness. A bursary of $200 also accompanies the award. Today, the award goes to Ben Woodward. Ben is an Ontario Envirothon alumni and an active volunteer in the 2021 program. Not only was he profiled in the company tree blog, he was also active as a judge and mentor, and he participated in online engagement. Congratulations, Ben. Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Woodward. I'm a third year geography student at the University of Waterloo. I'm a proud Envirothon alumnus, and this year I was honored to receive Forest Ontario's White Pine Award uh, from promoting forest education and awareness. As Ontario's forests face new and continuing challenges ranging from the impacts of climate change to habitat fragmentation and more, forest education is more important than ever. This is because there is a significant and ever-present knowledge gap between the academics and professionals who interact with and study the forest and the general public. And that's what makes programs like the Ontario Envirothon so important. Uh, the Envirothon provides uh, students with high quality educational uh, materials on forestry and other environmental topics, access to forest professionals, and of course the incentive to learn this material through the spirit of teamwork and friendly competition. I was exceptionally lucky to participate in Envirothon throughout high school and I had the privilege of volunteering as a mentor and judge at the competition last year. Environmental education is an incredibly rewarding experience, and if you ever have the chance uh, to teach somebody something about forests or the environment, go for it. Not only does it feel great to talk about something you're interested in and pass along your knowledge, but by doing so, you're helping increase Ontario's environmental literacy and thus taking a meaningful action to help mitigate uh, climate change and all the other environmental challenges that Ontario faces today. Thanks very much, Christine and Ben. Congratulations, very well deserved. Our next award is the Robert de Ponce Award, and it's going to be presented by George Ross. George is currently president and CEO of George Arthur Ross and Associates. And prior to this, he served the public sector with over 32 years of diverse experience. 
His previous Ontario Deputy Minister roles included Northern Development of Mind, Research and Innovation, and Customer Services. In the Yukon, Georgia's government roles included Deputy Minister of Energy and Mines and Resources and Acting President and CEO of the Yukon Development Corporation, Experienced Corporate Director with ICDD designation. The list goes on and on. Gord George is, is extremely accomplished. One point of, uh, with regards to his connection with Forest Ontario and certainly the 50 million tree program is George was very instrumental in development of the 50 million tree program. And it was in fact because of, because of George that Tim Gray was seconded over to Trees Ontario at the time, which at that time increased the staff complement by 100%. I was the other staff. In fact, George even lent Tim his car and Tim was an incredible asset to assisting Trees Ontario getting off the ground. So with that, George, over to you. Hello everyone, my name is George Ross and I'm speaking to you from snowy Owen Sound, Ontario. It is my great pleasure to be with you today as the recipients of the 2022 Robert de Pontier Award. But before I do that, I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate the whole Forest Ontario team, the governors, staff, volunteers, donors and funders for all the work you've done. For many years now, I've been watching the work of Forest Ontario from afar and the progress you've made is really inspiring. Your advocacy for biodiversity, your commitment to collaboration, your engagement with landowners is remarkable, and the legacy of your work will be felt for generations to come, I'm sure. Now, on to the business at hand. The Robert de Planche Award, otherwise known as the Forest Stewardship Award, is presented annually to individuals for outstanding activities in private land forest management and strong support for forestry promotion, education, and understanding. I am truly delighted that the recipients of the 2022 Robert de Ponce Award are Barb and Eric Boysen. The Boysens have been selected for this award this year because of their instrumental contributions in designing the original structure and budget of the 50 Million Tree Program. The 50 Million Tree Program was inspired by global efforts to plant billions of trees worldwide each year. This budget and program structure that the Boysons designed proved to be an ideal model to bring life to the program during the years that it was supported by the province. Further, it's fair to say that the 50 Million Tree Program has stood the test of time. And because of the collaboration of so many organizations, it has grown and been recognized by many, including our federal government, is one of the most effective afforestation programs across Canada. As of 2021, Forest Ontario has planted more than 34 million trees with 6,200 projects creating approximately 17,000 hectares of new forests across the province. What an incredible legacy for our forests here in Ontario. I simply can't imagine more deserving recipients of this award than the boys and said clearly their early work has had an incredible and long lasting impact. I first met the boys and many years ago when we all worked for MNR in Peterborough. I quickly recognized that their commitment to the work of the ministry was not simply a job. It was their vocation. As a former colleague and friend, I can attest to their unwavering commitment to biodiversity, to stewardship, the sound private land forest management policy for the province in their careers, throughout their careers. Barb and Eric epitomize the best of Ontario public service. Their career highlights, including their support of the 50 million tree program, have been well recognized. Their ability to forge and sustain effective partnerships speaks for itself. I know their advocacy and passion continues with them now, even in retirement. I have lots of fond memories of our days that we all work together and many stories which I think are probably better held over to a time when we can gather and have a drink together sometime in the near future. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the rest of the conference and please join me in a heartfelt congratulation to Barb and Eric Boysen, the winners of the 2022 Robert de Ponce Award. Hi, Eric Boysen here. I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much to Forest Ontario for the uh, honor of receiving the Robert DePenser Award and how pleased I am to be receiving it along with my wife Barb. Um, it's kind of funny looking back on my career with the Ministry of Natural Resources. I spent the first part uh, really planting trees on Crown, private and agree forest lands and it was kind of sad when the uh, program uh, went away in the 90s. 
But I always thought, well, no, there's still lots of good reasons to plant trees and uh, worked away at it. Um, through the early 2000s, we did a lot of reports to try to figure out how many landowners would be interested, what the incentive program needed to be, uh, where you could plant trees and for what reason, and uh, did a lot of carbon calculations, that kind of thing. But it wasn't until the mid-2000s when it took a little bit of um, uh, political courage on behalf of uh, Minister David Ramsey at the time to, to bring back the 50 million tree program. So I really want to thank him and his staff. I think it was Amanda McKenzie. But these programs just don't come out of nowhere. So, uh, you know, I was involved, but I want to thank other people like Paul Gray and Donna Wales, who are in the uh, climate change office. But at the, um, at the senior management level, it was George Ross and uh, my good friend Gail Beggs that really helped to champion this program along. So with that, I just leave you with one thought. Uh, ancient Chinese proverb, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Next best time is today. So if you're a landowner, please sign up for the 50 million tree program. And thanks again. Hello, I am very honored to receive this award and especially happy to receive it from my husband, Eric, who is a forestry colleague and a classmate of mine. It's a very special acknowledgement of our 45 years together, a lifetime really. In many ways, I see the 50 million tree program as a quilt, a quilt of my career. In it, I see all the forests, the programs and the people. But it came along after more than a decade of significant political ripping and tearing of the historical forest program, the private land program, and even unfortunately of the forest. Getting it up and running involves strategic high-level planning and support, and for that we are grateful. But this quilt would still be in the planning stage without all those who stitch it together, the tattered old program pieces, the people who knew where those tattered pieces still existed. The stitching was done with passion and expertise by so many old and new local partners, expertise that cannot be overestimated. So here's to all of you. Keep your needles ready. There will be inevitable rips and tears ahead. But if we try hard, we can keep this quilt and our forest together. So here's to you, here's to us, here's to the forest, and thank you. Thanks so much, George and, and Barb and Eric. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing. And, uh, and the, the word passion comes to mind so often when, when thinking of either one of you. And certainly uh, having discussions with Eric in the very early days of the, the creation of the 50 million program and how that evolved. Um, and even to the point of uh, Eric and, and Barb, I think I've still got your spreadsheet around with that original budget, all color coded. It was absolutely gorgeous. So uh, thanks you guys, you're so, so well deserving uh, to receive that award. I'd like to now uh, call upon Steve Hounsel to present the Green Legacy Award. Now, you, you heard Steve in his keynote uh, presentation and it was absolutely brilliant. Um, and certainly the passion with Steve and, and biodiversity, there's second to none. Uh, but what's particularly, and I mentioned it at the introduction of Steve for his uh, keynote, but Steve did spend the majority of his career with Ontario Power Generation and the former Ontario Hydro, where he developed and managed their first biodiversity policy and program, the first of its kind in the electricity industry. So I think you'll see why it's so appropriate that Steve now present this award. So Steve, over to you. Hello, I'm Steve Hounsel, past president of Forest Ontario. It is my great pleasure to present Forest Ontario's Green Legacy Award. The Green Legacy Award is presented to a visionary corporate partner that is instrumental in ensuring a green legacy for future generations. I am proud to say that this year's recipient is Ontario Power Generation, or OPG in short. OPG is being recognized for their great work in mainstreaming biodiversity across their operations, for being a leader in advancing nature-based solutions for biodiversity, climate change, and human benefits, and for demonstrating that industry can coexist with nature, be restorative, and win the confidence of local communities and thereby earn their license to operate. Their programs have turned critics into valuable allies and have garnered many fine partners in program delivery and management, including Forest Ontario. They are doing the right thing. OPG's programs range from the Regional Biodiversity Program conceived in 2000 for strategically restoring forest habitat for both biodiversity and climate benefits, 
with a cumulative planting of more than 8 million trees to date, to also embrace the restoration of more than 200 acres of both grassland and wetland habitat. It also embraces employee and community engagement in habitat protection and restoration efforts. OPG also engages Indigenous communities, including partnering in the Eastern Ontario First Nations Working Group and the Healing Place, a program that Forest Ontario also proudly supports and is a member of. OPG also hosted a Power the Forest Employee Donation Program campaign, which raised funds to support the planting of 40,000 trees through Forest Ontario's 50 million tree program. In short, great programs with a great true green legacy. For those of you who know me, you will also know that I spent my career with OPG and the former Ontario Hydro. Indeed, I was responsible for developing OPG's biodiversity programs and managed its regional biodiversity program for the first 12 years of existence prior to retiring. So it does my heart great warmth to see these programs flourish, grow and diversify under new program management leadership. It truly is a green legacy, which I hope continues to grow for decades to come. Indeed, I hope others follow OPG's lead. So it is my great pleasure to recognize Ashley Fox of Ontario Power Generation with the Forest Ontario Green Legacy Award. I know Ashley well. Ashley also represents OPG and the Ontario Biodiversity Council, of which I am chair. Ashley is a passionate and deserving leader on this file. Congratulations, Ashley and OPG. I'm Aaron Delpino, Vice President, Environment, Health and Safety at Ontario Power Generation. On behalf of OPG, I want to say thank you for recognizing our efforts with the prestigious Green Legacy Award. At OPG, we know that biodiversity and climate change go hand in hand, and we're committed to setting and meeting ambitious goals to continue creating a cleaner Ontario. We're building a brighter tomorrow, and the time is now to make change. In 2020, OPG released its first ever climate change plan. Among other actions, we're targeting 10 million trees planted across Ontario by 2025. We've already surpassed 8 million trees planted, and last year, our employees showed their commitment to creating a carbon-free future for Ontario by donating their time and resources, enabling us to sponsor the planting of 40,000 additional trees through our Power the Forest fundraiser. We take a lot of pride in being able to partner with organizations such as Forest Ontario 50 Million Tree Program as we combat climate change together. Thank you for including us. And again, thank you for this award. Congratulations, OPG and, and Steve, one of many legacies of your efforts and, and passion in moving the biodiversity programs forward throughout Ontario and in fact, throughout Canada. I'd now like to present or ask Elizabeth Selenovich to present our most valuable planter award. Liz has been the chief operating officer for Forest Ontario for over a year and has been leading our team in the development and implementation of its restoration programs, generating new partnerships across Canada to support and achieve Forest Ontario's regreening mandate. Liz has a degree in environmental studies with a focus on resource management and GIS systems from York University. And since graduating, Liz has been very focused on overall tree planting, working with Toronto and Region Conservation Authority for over 12 years. And certainly Liz has an incredible knowledge of, of afforestation works and an incredible passion. So Liz, over to you. Hi everyone, hope you're enjoying the conference so far. My name is Elizabeth Sinolovich and I am the Chief Operating Officer with Forest Ontario. And I'm honored to be presenting the Most Valuable Planter Award. This award recognizes outstanding contributions to the health of our natural ecosystems through tree planting initiatives and this year, I have the pleasure to present this award to Rick Napton. Rick has been coordinating the tree planting program at the Cataraqui Region Conservation Authority for over 30 years and has been involved in Forest Ontario's tree planting program since Forest 2020 back in 2005. Through the 50 million tree program, Cataraqui Region Conservation Authority has planted over 2 million trees. Rick coordinates and delivers on every aspect of the program, including landowner outreach and engagement, planning, site preparation, planting, tending, and long-term monitoring. 
Rick is well respected and is always willing to share his expertise to help make our planting program stronger and more responsive to the needs of other partners and private landowners. As a great planting delivery agent, his planting operation is well run and achieves high standards and ongoing success. Congratulations, Rick Napton. First of all, I would like to thank all of you at Forest Ontario for bestowing this wonderful award to me, as I'm greatly humbled. As I mentioned to Rob earlier, I am sure that there are people out there more deserving of this award than I, but I'm grateful, but I'm grateful for recognition nonetheless. As I was reflecting back on my 31 career years of employment with Cataract Lake Conservation, I soon realized that I had been a partner with Forest Ontario, which of course was originally called Trees Ontario, for 21 of those years. That is a long-standing relationship and a great chunk of my career. As a result of this partnership, I have had great fortune of working with many excellent and dedicated people over the years, which I will be forever grateful. Just shows how important, how important partnerships, teamwork and collaboration are for us all to achieve our common goals. Keep up the great work, everybody, and thanks again. Thanks very much, Rick, and congratulations. There is, you are certainly so deserving of that award. Uh, and yes, it's been a very long-standing relationship that we've had uh, with you, Rick. Um, of interest, and, and for those of you that uh, may attend our post-plant meetings, uh, Rick is generally always there, and uh, he always he always has questions, and he always starts those questions. Well, this might be a stupid question. Well, coming from Rick, it is never a stupid question. It is always right on to the point, and so helpful with his with his thoughts and how we can make the program better. So thanks so much, Rick, for all your efforts. I'd now like to um, bring uh, Monique Re Van Rolfbaum Clark uh, up for our Forest Ontario Award. Monique is currently the Deputy Minister of Minister of Northern Development, Mines, Natural Resources and Forestry, and was appointed that in July of 21. Monique has worked with uh, MDM at RF, oh good, for more than 25 years, her prior role of deputy minister, she was assistant deputy minister for the regional operations division. Throughout her career, Monique has held a variety of director and managerial role, roles in the ministry as it contributed to several significant modernization and change management initiatives. I met Monique when she was a district manager of Bancroft Minden District, and it's no surprise that she's risen through the ranks to her current position. So Monique, over to you. Thank you for inviting me to speak to you today. I'm honored to be part of the Forest Ontario Annual Conference and the award ceremony. I'm particularly pleased to present the Forest Ontario Award. This award recognizes individuals for outstanding achievements and contributions to the field of forestry education in Canada and around the world. This year, recipients of the Forest Ontario Award goes to the following group of individuals for their outstanding work in creating and delivering the Ontario Tree Marking Certification Program. Al Corlett, Scott Reed, Brian Batchelor, Bob Dines, Brian Naylor, Carrie Sinibaldi, Al Stinson, Jeff Levy, Mike Walsh, and Steve Monroe. Some might refer these individuals as the founders of the Tree Marking Program, a great accomplishment achieved during their many years working for the ministry Many have since moved on to other roles in the forest industry or are now fully retired. Back in 1993, when they started working on this program, they invested a great deal of time and effort towards building a curriculum that was well balanced, bringing together both theory and practical application. The objective of the course was to provide consistency in the application of tree marking on partial cut civil cultural systems in the Great Lakes St. Lawrence Forest region and to ensure best science related to civil cultural and habitat management efforts. For this, they had to consider testing criteria and the pass fail standards. They also had to find the right instructors for each course topic, prepare presentations and establish all field exercises and testing plots. Their work resulted in a very comprehensive program consisting of three levels of training, ranging from tree marking crew and tree marking auditor crew boss to prescription writing. Their passion, perseverance, and dedication helped the program achieve its objectives. The program was launched in 1994 by our ministry, and since then over 1,700 students have participated in the course. 
This program is successful due to several factors, including a strong science base, practical field oriented focus, high instructor to student ratio, and strong support from the ministry and the forest industry. This program was especially successful because of the dedicated tight knit team of highly qualified individuals with experience in all aspects of forest management. The tree marker training program was not only fundamentally important to support Ontario's sustainable forest management practices, but it also was instrumental in helping to address other crown land management challenges, such as protecting significant habitat, wood supply and old growth forests. This program has also helped to raise the quality of forest management activities on private lands, since many municipalities require the use of certified tree markers as a measure of sustainable practice. While the program continues to evolve, the structure and much of the content established by that core group is still in place today. Beyond this program, the instructors have also contributed to several important civil cultural guides and documents, such as the Ontario Tree Marking Guide. Since its inception 27 years ago, several of the current instructors have also been involved with the design and delivery of provincial level courses. This is a further testament to their dedication and commitment to sustainable force management. I'd also be remiss if I didn't make a special note of the many experts that have joined the program over the years and who themselves have made significant contributions. These include Manon Besner, Eric Boysen, Mike Burness, Liz Cobb, Ken Elliott, Jody Hall, Rod Hanselman, Ethan Hooner, Steve Hunter, Trevor Jones, Lynn Landreau, Jordan McMillan, Kim Mahan, Scott McPherson, Fred Pinto, Bill Rose, Fraser Smith, Martin Street, Lori Thompson, Ken Webb, Murray Woods, and Debbie Yarnell. I hope you will join me in congratulating the recipients of this year's Forest Ontario Award for their important contributions to the field of forestry education in Canada and around the world. These recipients are a testament to the dedication and passion of so many ministry staff that I have had the pleasure of working with over the years. Thank you. Hi, Al Stinson here coming to you from the lovely well-managed forest owned by Candid Zuba and Brian Naylor near Corbeil. I wanna begin by thanking Rob Keane and Forest Ontario for recognizing our group, uh, something I like to call the original 10, for our work almost three decades ago developing the tree marking training program. I can't believe it's been that long, but it has flown by. I'd also like to thank Forest Ontario and the Canadian Institute of Forestry for all of your support helping us maintain this program in recent years. Without that support uh, behind us and a platform by which we can deliver this program, we wouldn't be here today talking about it. I want to close by saying it's been a highlight for me to work with these two gentlemen and the rest of the gang over close to three decades delivering the program. Thanks very much and Brian, now to you. Hi, I'm Brian Batchelor. I'd also like to thank Forest Ontario for recognizing our group with this award. I'd also like to acknowledge former MNR Regional Director Al Stewart, who tasked us with setting up this program back in the early 90s. Without Al's initial guidance and support, the program never would have got off the ground. I'd also like to thank on behalf of our group, all the MNR and forest industry folks that helped us set up and run many of the level, level two and refresher courses over the years. I'd also like to acknowledge a few people that stepped up to help guide our program after our original leader, Scott Reed, retired. Scott McPherson, Debbie Arnell, then Al Corlett, who uh, led us into the Forest Ontario era, and now Martin Streit, Doc Naylor. Thank you, Bunk. I'm Brian Naylor, um, and I'm delighted to be a recipient as well. And on behalf of all my colleagues, I would just like to say that working on the tree marking course has been one of the most important and most enjoyable things that I've done in my career, and we've all done in our careers. Uh, we got to work with an amazing group of people developing the course and delivering the course, uh, and we really felt that we were making a big difference in the, how the forests of central Ontario and beyond are being, were being managed and continue to be managed. And one thing that I find really rewarding is that after 30 years, the people who are delivering the course today are just as excited about the course and having just as much fun as we did 30 years ago almost when we first developed and ran the first course in the early 90s. So in closing, I would just like to once again thank Rob and Forest Ontario for this prestigious award.
Thanks, guys. That was very well put. And uh, and certainly with Monique, uh, great, great presentation. No better group, uh, so well deserved than you folks for the, the amazing work you do with your with your forestry education program. Um, I was reminiscing and, and I actually took the course in 96 and uh, a few years ago. And uh, I tell you, it had to have been the best course that I ever had. And uh, certainly, Brian, you know, your work in the wildlife side of things, I found fascinating and all the other work that was done too, and all the other um, the presenters there and the experts that provided the information was amazing. And in fact, I was just at the course last, um, it was just in the fall where they were giving the course again uh, here in Huntsville. And uh, I was able to see folks like Brian and, and, and uh, many of the others that were there uh, and uh, some of the new folks too that were there is to, to take over the reins. And still, as uh, Brian Naylor just said, the passion continues and uh, it's still an excellent course. So, so thank you so much for putting this course and keeping it going and, and the passion behind you is, continues to grow. So thank you so much. Um, so that's it for the awards folks. And I uh, certainly do uh, thank you for joining us for these. Um, I hope you had a great day. Uh, certainly a lot of great inspiring discussions going on. I uh, hope you had a chance to network using the, the Kumo space and spotted yourself on your, your gamification leaderboard. Don't forget to visit the virtual uh, photo booth and leave your mark. Uh, so I hope you can join us tomorrow for the ecocentric to anthropocentric uh, perspectives on forest values, uh, wildfire challenges in Canada, and sustainable forestry, an ally in the fight against climate change. So have a wonderful evening, folks, and to rock you on your way, here's the salt sellers again uh, with their hit tune inside these walls. Thanks so much and have a great night.